to another running on air video. In this one, I'm going to have a look at transferring patch data from the CZ1 to Windows 10 PC using MIDIOX. Now, I've already tried this with the ESQ1 and I was able to transfer individual patches, but not banks. With the CZ1, I've got the opposite problem. I can transfer the banks, but not the individual patches. So the first thing to remember is don't use one of these because uh, they don't transport system exclusive. So you need a proper branded USB to MIDI interface. Okay, the next thing is to set up MIDIOX. When you start it up, you go to uh, View and then System Exclusive and you get the System Exclusive screen. So here you want to go to the SysX, Receive Manual Dump, okay, and then it's going to wait for you to send stuff. On the CZ1, well, make sure your MIDI is on. You go to the MIDI button here and you go down and System Exclusive, Tone Data, Disable. This needs to be enabled. All right, so you go to the Cartridge MIDI button. It starts with the cartridge. You then go down and you get to the MIDI save or load and you want to save, save MIDI data and then go yes. And you'll notice that we're getting a lot of data being sent over to MIDIOX. Takes a while. It really takes a while. Okay, so save MIDI data, okay, here. And then over on here, we click done. And we can see we have loads and loads of hexadecimal. Now we go to display window. I hadn't worked this out before, but because the data is in the display window, that's why you go to display window and then save as. Once you've got that file onto your PC, you can then send it back. So how do we do that? So it's pretty much the same. So the main thing is you've got to make sure that your protect button at the back is set off because it's going to write to the keyboard and it's going to overwrite everything. So you've got to make sure that you really want to send the data back because it's going to overwrite the whole thing. And then what we want to do is from our sysx, we want to send a sysx file. All right, so that's our file. So again, we go to the cartridge MIDI, down to select MIDI. Then we want to save or load. So we want to load. Now at this point, if I go yes, you'll get a bit confused. So I think what you have to do is just start sending it. Let's just, yeah. Now this is, this is where it goes absolutely crazy. You can see it loading every single patch and saving just goes through the whole lot. I really like the fact that you get to see what's going on because potentially you could spot a problem. Okay, so it's done. Yeah, they're all saved. So that's it, really. So let's just check the sounds. Yeah, okay, so I mean, there's an interesting thing because it will, it also gets a little bit confused about some of the controls. So the, the last couple of times I've done this, it puts it in tone mix mode, and then you think, well, what the hell's going on? So you've got to make sure you you change the controls back to the way it was. So that's basically it. So I think you can see that using that particular method, you can do a decent backup of the synth. But it's not very good as a, a librarian. You can't reorder patches or build your own banks or anything like that. So in the next video, I'm going to have a look at Virtual CZ and see if that can resolve the problem. 
I bought virtual CZ simply because I wanted to be able to create CZ sounds when I was moving about and also it was on offer and I managed to get it for a very good price. It's actually significantly more expensive now so whether it's really worth it um, as a librarian or not, or not well, we'll check that out in the next video. Now the other thing I wanted to say was that's potentially just one option. If you have some better options or if you worked out how to get MIDIOX to accept individual patches from the CZ1, then please let me know. If that was helpful, then maybe you could consider leaving a like and subscribe if you want to see my progress on a particular topic and other topics as well. Thanks for watching and bye.